my name is Norma Jean Cobb. And um, what year were you born? I was born in 1923. And where? In Port Credit, Ontario. What's your earliest childhood memory? I guess um, my father worked on the road, railroad and I think walking on the railroad and he was, we were going someplace and it was easier to walk on the railway tracks and a short distance than walk on the road. and we were going to his relatives. Did you walk on the tracks a lot doing that? No, no. Well, he would, they, he would have to be with me. Yeah, we were. I think they probably walked more than I realized. How long have you lived in Dundas? Since 1933. I think it was, it was May, May 15th, we came in the school year. Yeah. What was it like coming into the school year so late? It wasn't that great, I guess. The, when I went to the principal's office with my letter and he sent me up to a grade seven class with this gal to introduce me. And while we waited outside the door, the school bell rang and she said, I have to go, to go to my class. So I stood there, this little shorty, my father called me, and Miss Cook, the teacher came, a tall, long-legged lady, and walked by me and shut the door in my face. <laughs> And I had to knock on the door to get into the room, but but uh, it wasn't it, it it was a big big school, and we had come from Linden, and and my uncle took us, Madge and I, down to have a look at the school, and he told my mother their eyes were big when they looked at this big school uh, at. Uh, at the big school, but anyway, it wasn't that bad that I remember. And why did your family move here? My father worked on the railway, and we lived in Linden with a very small population, and I was 10, and Madge was 13, and my mother said there was no uh, way that we would get employment when we got older, living in Linden. So the, the uh, job came out in Dundas, and my dad applied and got the job in Dundas as section foreman. Do you remember any stories of your dad uh, working on the railroad in Dundas? Well, um, um, we came in the in the thirties, and and that's when the train, the big train wreck was. I I don't know exactly the year, but it was in the thirties, just 
and and I I can remember being a, a Christmas night, and and I was outside with the other children on the street by the street lamp and it was dark and my father came down and told me that there'd be a wreck and I was not to go to the because we were not we did not live far from where it happened and and so uh, I do believe that many people went up to see this but I have no idea how, how they would even uh, get near near the area because it was uh, on the side of the escarpment. And I remember my father having to go to court to uh, clarify that, that, that the track was in good condition. Yeah. Was your family religious at all? Pardon? Uh, was your family religious at all? Religious? Yes. Uh, we, when we came to Dundas, we went to the Presbyterian Church, and we went to. They had Sunday school on Sunday afternoon, and and uh, at Knox Presbyterian, and it was. Uh, they had. Uh, a large building at the back of the church and and then the, the uh, classes were separated and then uh, uh, they had a little balcony and then we had then we after our lesson we went out and sat so that all the classes were out and and they had a I can remember this little orchestra that they had on a platform down in the middle, and uh, uh, I don't know what instrument the man in charge played, but his one daughter played the piano, and another one played the cello, and 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 then there was a couple of others playing instruments, and and then they had uh, they had services on Sunday night at that time. Yes, it was, and then later on, uh, we, after we got older, we went to young people's, and it was, I was, like we were quite involved, or we were good uh, parishioners, or whatever you call them, yeah. Um, how do you think going to the church affected your social interactions? I don't know whether it affected or not. It was just that the the people there. It was such a small town, and the people that were at church were uh, just as pleasant and and as caring as other people in the town. Yeah, we were. It was all a, seemed to be a happy place. Yeah, the minister were there when we were younger. As I always remember one man, when a minister came back, he said he he was here in our formative years, and. And we all cared for this one minister very much. Do you remember his name? Uh, w. B. Mitchell. And then when he would come back, I remember he came back, and he gave the uh, uh, benediction, and this girl said to me, Norma, there wasn't a dry eye. Yeah. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. What area of Dundas did you grow up in? In the West End. We were 
uh, at the at the not too far from the uh, uh, from the high school, the district high school, and um, and there were uh, um, there was uh, on our street was it seemed wider than the others and. Children or people that were friends with us would we'd always be at on Brock Street, and there be I think of three or, or four girls that came from just a block or so away, but they always came to our street, and and. Even some of the uh, boys in the area, they would come and, and we always were outside playing and playing on the streets and, and playing all the street games. What kind of street games did you play on Brock Street? Like uh, <laughs> Duck in the Rock. <laughs> How do you play Duck in the Rock? <laughs> Well, I think I think you have a big rock, and everybody has a single one, and then the person that's is at home base. He puts his rock on the bigger rock, and the other people have to come along and try to knock it off. And from there on, I don't know. <laughs> But it, it was always a good game, yeah. Uh, and run sheep, run. I think we'd play, you know, choose up sides, and 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 one group would disappear, and the other would try to find them. Sort of like a hide and seek thing, but a little more involved, yeah. But we were always, we were always playing on the streets. Yeah. Do you remember what Dundas was like before the war? Yes. That was, yeah, because uh, I was, uh, that's, that would, that would be before the war because I was probably uh, oh, sixteen or so, yeah, and so I was at school, and it was it was always pleasant and. We always had things to do. And um, uh, someone was saying uh, that uh, we, in the summertime, the girls, we used to s swim at the, uh, on the, Well, I guess on the side of the of the opposite the where the high school was and and there was a it was sort of a a, a, a swimming hole and and someone had put it, there was a diving board there and and I think there were about five or six girls and we the spectator came out and took our picture there, and then we would 
go and then when it was time to go home they had a a blanket factory that was near and the blanket factory would let out the dye at about probably between four and five o'clock and it would come into where we were swimming so that was our message to go home <laughs> but but this happened every day that they dumped this dye out yeah and then in the after that we graduated up to we used to uh, go up into the ravine which was a trail from behind the Dundas station up through to Webster's Falls. And we used to um, go up into the ravine and, and, and go walk around from Webster's Falls to Two's Falls. And of course, today, they have, uh, it is one of the famous places, I understand, on the 24th of May, they had to have police there to stop them from parking. And, but uh, we had freedom. Yeah, but, uh, and before the war, I guess, I guess it was carefree. Yeah, and then, and then of course, the, the boys my age, yeah, in a way, they had a, a, a unit in town. And we lost a lot of good young men. What was the town yeah. like during the war? Well, I guess um, they uh, had a, a Bertram factory and they were busy and and I don't know that exactly how it would change for myself that much. They had uh, dances um, and and I had uh, I had no brothers that to, to go to war, but many of the men that I went to school with didn't come back. Dances like? Oh, it was always. I don't know whether it was before the war, but they used to have a big uh, um, uh, quite a good sized building at the park and they used to have an orchestra, and then on Friday night they've had dances, and I, I don't know whether it was peanuts, I guess, and and it was mostly uh, single people going and and dancing. There, and in most places they had uh, uh, dances. Uh, and and when we were older, there used to be at the top of the hill in Greensville, they'd have a dance, and 
and we would hitchhike. Two or three of us would, and then there'd be some other girls, and we'd all be hitchhiking up to go to the dance at Greensville because, but we knew we we'd always get a ride home. Uh, but it was always just fun thing to do. Why did you start hitchhiking? Pardon? I said, why did you start hitchhiking, or what made you uh, start? Who was the first to? Oh, I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But you know, it was, it was quite easy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you just got went up to the top of the hill and on the on the highway, yeah. And the the uh, dance hall was only just a a short distance from the highway. Yeah. But they had uh, in Hamilton they had dances at the Alec. They had dances a lot. It, in and in Hamilton they had. Um, in the summertime, they had dances at the Wonder Grove, and they're much more. Uh, you didn't have to go as a couple; it was always stag. Yeah, and 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 it was. Uh, everybody it was just the thing that everybody enjoyed doing yeah and in the winter time we had a, a a skating rink that i guess it was before the war and and they the some of the older boys they made the skating rink on uh, Witherspoon Street, and everybody went skating there. And even I'd, I'd you'd put on your skates, and I'd walk. I'd have to walk four or five blocks to get to the skating rink. But I walked on my skates, and then the people that lived in the area, their their uh, children. Well, they had more, got more friends at that time because they'd invite these people to come and change their skates at their house. And this one girl said, "Our family, their their life wasn't worth too much because they had all these kids coming in to change their skates." Yeah. No, it was good. Good times. What was your first job? My first job was my mother dealt with Powell and Company at 181 King Dundas and I had finished school in the uh, uh, Delivery guy came up and said that they needed somebody to work in the store, and this girl that worked there suggested me. So I started there in the summertime at uh, Powell and Company. Powell's had a main store down at, at the end of Dundas, and this was a branch and. Uh, there were people my age that worked there, and and uh, I think I think Friday, I don't know what we uh, we made up orders and they and uh, waited on the customers and and I think on Friday night we worked till maybe ten o'clock or so. But uh, that might be wrong. Was, I know we did. I'm sure we did one night. And then from there, I went over. I went to work at Bertram's, which was the uh, uh, big plant in 
machine plant in Dundas, and I worked in the uh, above the uh, a shop in the planning department for a little while, and then um, there were people there, mostly mostly people from town, and then. Uh, I don't know how long I worked there, and then I got a job at the uh, Bank of Montreal in Hamilton at Main and James Street, yeah, and I was there for 30 years, I guess. When did you stop working there? When did I stop working there? Be 1979. Why did you stop? Well, I've never really told this story. There was a guy there that used to hang around the girls all the time. They, and, and, you know, they kept changing people. You know, people would move on to other things and this character came in and one day, uh, he, he was walking beside me and he put his arm around me. And it was a, there were 90 people on staff and it was open. And I said to him, get your cotton picking hands off of me because I've worked here too long. And I went to one of the this went to the assistant manager and told him that I don't know what was going to happen. And anyway, they knew what he was like, but they did nothing. And then they kept making bad reports for me. And then finally, to the point where I was fortunate that I had got my 30 years in, but I put up with uh, not getting, uh, uh, when they gave an across the board increase, I didn't get one and because my performance wasn't that good and there was someone new would come in and they'd just say that, that I was one person that would give them trouble and finally my doctor said, you have to quit. So that's, that's how I ended my but uh, but before that, it was a delightful place to work. I had I had uh, at, at when I when I was uh, started work, I made great friends there. But it was bad, and it, it's something that wouldn't happen today. And I probably didn't realize that I should have maybe gone further, gone to speak to some of the friends that I'd made that were lawyers in the, in, uh, at the bank, yeah, because we were right down in the main part of the city. And that I have not spoken of that. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt angry at that guy, just like, you know, <laughs> slightly enraged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was bad. Did you ever have to deal with him again, or was it once you were done? Well, um, I, I, I always remember that. I was there, and and he came, he came back, and the, and the guy that was in, uh, that was an accountant, you know, he said, Norma, he said, when that guy came up the stairs, everybody's head turned the opposite way. <laughs> they weren't having anything to do with him. Yeah, no, 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 because I was, you know, it's. Oh no! That the uh, 
the the uh, manager uh, didn't do the right thing by me. But anyway, I survived. What did, what did you do to pass the time after you finished working there? Well, um, actually, I was a, a golfer. And, and, and um, my mother was living by herself, and so I'd been, I had been uh, quite close to her and that. And but then, then my mother passed away in in uh, 1980, and then. Um, I uh, joined a, a hiking group and and I played bridge uh, and uh, I was in we had a great uh, membership at the golf club and lots of good times and there was uh, uh, not too many dull moments. No. What's your favorite place in Dundas? Oh, my favorite place, I suppose, would be the ravine going up to Webster's Falls. Yeah. Do you have a significant memory that kind of ties that to, to make that your favorite spot? Uh, oh, it's been there so many times. As a matter of fact, uh, what's your first name again? It's Devin. Devin, yeah. As a matter of fact, Devin, my son phoned me yesterday to say that his daughter and her son who was who will be three, and my son went out to the peak. We went out. We went. We, we took him out to the peak, mum, and which is, um, you can probably see it from the balcony here. Um, so that there's a we we used to go up the trail from behind the station and then you get up to Webster's Falls and they used to have wooden steps and we'd climb up to Webster's Falls and you walk around to Two's Falls and then you walk out to the peak and then you can see the valley and that's the ultimate. And, and my granddaughter who, uh, she it was always one of her favorite places so they took her little son, yeah. Yeah, introduce him to that. Yeah. No, that's that's my favorite spot. What was it like raising uh, kids in Dundas? Oh, well, David and I lived with my parents, and there were other children. Well, one, one. Uh, uh, family had ten children uh, and uh, then of course uh, in the Dundas scheme of things uh, the boys his age they got into the ravine bash and you know, he said mom guess what day the ravine bash is going to be on this year my 21st birthday so you rode on the golf cart. Excuse me. I I can get it. Hello. Yes. Okay, Lynn. There you go. Um. So. Uh, um. 
what was I saying? Uh, the ravine bash area. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, that the boys, yeah, some of them were. Well, as one one of the boys said, it, Norma, it just takes one bad kid and one bad cop to get things going. But however, anyway, we survived the ravine bash. Yeah. Yeah, and they, uh, those boys in town, they had a good time, I guess. Um, is is there a person in Dundas throughout your life who's really stood out to you? Well. I don't know about that. Nick Genovese. Oh, okay, yeah, probably Nick Genovese, yeah. And was talking about him before. Nick lost his sight at the steel fab or the costine when he was, I don't know, 17 or 18. because he didn't wear the glasses, I guess, when he was welding. And I think the, the boys the, were his friends. They were great to him. And then as he aged, um, he, uh, well, he ended up marrying his nurse, Nick did. And, uh, and he was a really, sweet guy, younger than myself by, I don't know, not that much, but he, he uh, uh, worked in Hamilton, he, and I think he was part of a, a, a little company or something, and he rode the bus, and uh, used to get the bus at, at Say he lived across the street at one time from where the bus stopped, and yeah, yeah, but uh, anyway, I was he had a guide dog, of course, and uh, uh, one day I was out and I saw him walking along with the dog, and I beeped the horn and I said to myself, That's not very nice, so I parked the car and went back and spoke to him. So then another day, uh, I was out and I saw him and I parked the car and went back and I said to him, Nick, it's Norma. I said, I've been looking for a good man around town. And I said, and I finally found one and you're it. And Nick said, oh, Norma, all the girls love Nick, especially the old girls, Norma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I was probably 10 years older than he or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was a uh, he was a real sweet guy, yeah. And um, they had a sports week in town, and they had a, a one of the stores that was vacant. They used that for people to display, and Nick brought in a photo of himself as a blind golfer with uh, with a photo with Bob Hope. Yeah, because Nick used to go to the States as a blind golfer. Yeah. Uh, no, he was, he was outstanding. Yeah, and then he, then he started singing and I was at a, a the, 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 uh, I can't think of the name of what I want to say now. Uh, um, the, where you have the funeral, the, uh, the, 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 uh, Cattell's, Lynn? Cattell Eaton? Um, what is it, what is it, a funeral home? Yeah. At the funeral home, at, before Christmas, they had a, 
a tree and then the people that had lost someone during the year and were buried through Cattell's, they used to, uh, to go up and, and put a blue light on the tree. And then at the last one, I went with a girlfriend of mine and, and Nick sang. And I remember after saying to him, that's the first time I've heard you sing, yeah. So he was well known as a singer too. Yeah. Yeah. Can you describe the driving park as you remember it? Or any, even he, if there's just a memory about it? Oh no, oh no. Um, It had, that, that's, they had at the driving park, when we first came, they had um, a baseball diamond and they had, oh, I, I'm getting terrible with this word, stands, they had uh, stands that were quite, quite a few to, because they had a industrial league baseball in town, and so the park was used a lot. And, and the park, uh, and of course, they had the tennis there, and they, and, uh, and always, always well used, the, the Dundas Driving Park. Yeah, and uh, uh, bowl and, and lawn bowling, there, lawn bowling there, something, and and uh, every first of July they have a pancake breakfast now, and and have had, yeah, but it's it's always been well used. People are always there, walking around first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, when I lived at the when I lived up at, uh, at the West End, it was you know, it was further away, but but uh, everybody everybody walked to the park. It was always well used. Even. I can remember when I worked at the bank in Hamilton and one of the men said to me, Norma, how about that? He said, I have to take my son out to Dundas to get a swing. Yeah, pretty, yeah. So it was always well used, always. Oh, I'll tell you a story about the, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, one of the boys from school, he told me about going to the movies because we had a movie theater that is now the Horn of Plenty. And actually, when we came to town, the, I think the mayor at Halloween took over the, the theater and and for free, and everybody got dressed up, and we, when we were just children, and and we went to this. But Bob, my friend, he went to the movies with his buddies, the Reds, their twins, redhead, and so. Bob fell asleep, and he must have sort of fallen off to the side, and the two buddies went home and left him. And I guess when the manager was checking, yet he couldn't see anybody, and he locked the place up. And so when Bob hadn't come home, well, his mother phoned 
these boys, and they said, oh, he was asleep in the show. So she had to call the manager, and I, I remember that man's name, but I, I've forgotten it now, and he had to go down and open up the show for, and wake Bob up. <laughs> yeah. So he was very fortunate, I guess. I always thought that was a good story. What are your thoughts on the amalgamation of Dundas to Hamilton? Well, I went around to get names against it, and I'm not, I'm not pleased with it now because they're putting up these condos even at the corner of Brock Street and and King Street, I understand they're going to put one up there. And no, I, I don't think Hamilton has helped us in those degrees, yeah. Uh, other ways, probably they might, might have done things good for us, but but certainly not, not to change the landscape of a neighborhood to put up such as abstrosities or astrosities. Yeah. What's the first major uh, local news event you can recall? Local news event? Well, I suppose it would be the train wreck because I don't know exactly what year it was. But it went, oh, it was in the 30s, and we came in 1933, and I don't think we've been here that long. How did you uh, feel when you heard the, the news about the trainer? Well, I was a young child, you know, and and then as the news came out as to how it happened, it, yeah, it's very sad when you have one steam engine plowing into the other. That's well, supposed to be safe off the main line to be safe. Yeah. What changes have you noticed in Dundas over the course of your life? Well, the uh, I at one time we had. many trees on either side of the King Street, and I think they widened King Street and took down the trees that, were, that had shaded, but they widened the street, which probably 
worked out for the better. What's the happiest moment of your life? Oh, I don't know. I've had some. I don't I don't think I could pinpoint a hap the happiest moment. What's a happy moment you can think of? Happy. I was last on Mother's Day. I was with my family at my granddaughter's, and we were all together, and that was a very happy moment. Yes. My son and daughter in law, and their two girls, and their husbands, and Desmond. Yeah, that was, and we were outside, yeah, that was a very happy moment for me. What words of advice would you like to pass on to future generations? Well, I think that you have to be thankful for what you have and and live and each day to be kind and caring. And as they say, and do unto others. And enjoy. So we're basically at the end. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Well, I probably would say that I'm just so happy that we came to Dundas because it has been a, a good life for us here. Yeah, yeah. It has. Do I have a memory to be rescued by uh uh, firemen up in Greensville? Pardon? Remember being rescued by the firemen up in Greensville? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? That That's a good story. <laughs> well, well, as I said, we used to... Uh, we Did we have the dog yeah, then? Yeah, the dog, yeah. yeah. To, to go up through the ravine and climb up the stairs to Webster, beside Webster's Falls was just something that, and, and it was so easy to do. And I took David, my son, and Lynn, and we had, and David had a little beagle dog, and probably she wasn't that old. And so we went up through the ravine and we're climbing up the stairs and Lynn, Time. Oh yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. And Lynn was a little chubby gal, <laughs> and she couldn't, oh, yeah. wasn't making up the stairs. So David and I are behind her, trying to push her up. <laughs> and, and there were quite a few steps, 
And so anyway, from the top comes down comes this guy. He said, I've just become a fireman and you're my first rescue, he said to her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I I go to uh, uh, Christine Tu. Uh, uh, this girl, she, she's married to uh, a Tu from uh, uh, whose family was Tu's Falls, and so anyway, I I said to her, I rem I remember when they had. Uh, a tree house, when they built a tree house there by the Tooze Falls, she said, what tree was that on? She said, <laughs> she said they're always arguing what tree it's on. I said, I don't know. I, I just always remember there was a tree house there. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, uh, so. What, any golfing stories, Norma? Aren't you the, the best golfer at the club? Uh, she won a, got a hole-in-one, remember? I got the hole-in-one, yeah. Right. yeah. She tell them a couple of golfing stories. Yeah, grandmother's tournament or something. I won the, I won the grandmother's tournament. Um, Flo Hancock and I tied, and we had to play off. And so uh, oh, we we have to do it. Soon, because it's close, it's the uh, the closing dinner and presenting the prizes. So okay, are going to do it this day? Okay. Well, she said, uh, we'll go at such and such a time because she said I'm going to have to do an hour of yoga before I go. <laughs> I thought, well, if you're doing an hour of yoga, so am I, because I used to go to yoga. Oh, for quite a few years and so anyway then uh, anyway I beat her and it's always been a joke between Flo and I but then yeah and uh, uh, then uh, Flo did win one year and I can remember when she went up to get her prize I stood up and gave her a big clap but but uh, yeah yeah I won that and yeah and I, I went to Elmira once uh, as an invitation. Golf, they, they, they sent you out a letter saying that they having an uh, invitation to play golf and you'd sign up. And so I went with these gals. And so when I was there, I had a, an aunt that lived there. and. And my uh, my cousin's son, I saw him at the club, and so when they gave out the prizes, I didn't win anything. And then they put out some more prizes, and and so they had a prize for a hairdresser or something. And so I said, "Is this in Elmira?" Yes. Yeah. So I, okay, I took it. So I went out and I found. Peter, my cousin's son, I said, here, Peter, give this to your grandmother for me. Yeah. So I was glad to win. That was one nice prize, yeah. But no, Dundas Valley was always, Dundas Valley and Centennial here in 1967, they sent out on the radio to invite people up to, because they were going to celebrate the centennial year, and they got all these people up, and they're lighting fireworks off at the tenth tee. Yeah. So. Think of anything else you want to talk about, or, or do you guys know anything you want to talk about? Trying to think of something else. Uh, um, Eva talked about your hiking. With Norma, still hikes around the Dundas Park, don't you? Or 
Oh, good. Well, I don't. I the our we've lost about four or five of the gals, so I don't go around there. Yeah. But you used to hike with um, Liz Lesser. Liz Lesser. Lesser hiking, yes. And you made up some uh, walk with her, and she made a book up about trails and hiking and Yes, yes, nice? yes. I, yeah. Uh, this this gal. Uh, she came from Montreal, and when she left Montreal there to, to come to Hamilton, I think her husband was a professor at Mac, and, and uh, everybody was telling her how horrible Hamilton was. So I think, I think the girls were taking typing, and then they came in and asked them if there was anything else they wanted to do, and they said, how about hiking? So, so it was sort of subsidized by the province, and then they cut that out and you, you paid two bucks or something. And uh, so she went around and got all these trails and and uh, and she wrote a book, uh, Hamilton is Beautiful. And, uh, but we, we would uh, go every two seas, I think was our hiking day that we went. And uh, then she'd, uh, we'd meet at a certain place. So being in Dundas, like hiking was Webster's Falls and Two's Falls, but with hiking with that group, I, I saw other falls in the area and I got places that I'd never been before, but it would be a two hour hike and then we'd come back, yeah. But it was, it was uh, always interesting. You also, Norma, remember you when you retired, you volunteered for the um, Information Dundas. Yeah, yeah. And also the RBG. Yeah, right. when when I I went to um, Amica where my sister is, I went there for respite care while my family were away, and when I was there. Uh, I met this lady and she said, oh, I, I knew you from uh, swimming at the pool and um, doing exercises at Max Seniors. Oh, okay. So then I sat with her one day and there were other people and one woman was complaining about Hamilton and I was saying about Liz Lesser and how, how she had done this. and. Anne was sitting beside me and she said, uh, was that Liz Lesser? And I said, yes. She said, well, I belong to her group too. Oh, okay. So then I sat with Anne another day and Leslie Laking was the head of the RBG in Hamilton and he was there and there was the three of us. So I thought, I have to tell him I volunteered and so anyway, when we were having coffee, I said, when I came in, they asked me if I knew you. And I said, well, I had potted with you once. And before they had a plant sale, people would donate their plants or slips and we'd go and set them all up. And he was there and, and I was working alongside him. And he said, well, that's a possibility. So this Anne, who'd done all these things that I'd done, said, I was a member over at headquarters at the RBG. So she and I, so he said, oh, wait till I tell so-and-so I met two volunteers today. Yeah, yeah. And you also did the um, information Dundas too, remember? You I did, did do that for a bit. Oh, oh, and, and uh, yeah. I forgot about yeah yeah when you say what did I do, and then I and then I I I was at the hospital, in the flower shop. And Nora, you were a single mother in Dundas at a time when that wasn't very common. How was that part of? Was that any stories around that? No, no. no. We just uh, I think that. I well I I went back to my 
work at the bank and and I'd been I'd been in in town that you know for a long time so it was just accepted yeah